I now have the great pleasure to introduce to you a remarkable young woman that I had the pleasure of working with at one point on a television series called The Unusuals, uh, Amber Tamblin. Uh, Amber was born and raised in Venice, California, and she has been nominated for an Emmy and a Golden Globe for her work in television and film. She came to fame in the soap opera General Hospital and is most recognized for her work as Joan on the CBS television program Joan of Arcadia. She co-starred in the 2010-2011 series of Fox television show House and starred in the TV series The Unusuals. In, I don't have a year here, but it was fairly recently that we were canceled. Uh, <laughs> other film roles include 127 Hours opposite James Franco and The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants and Main Street opposite Colin Firth. Amber Tamlin is the author of two poetry collections, Bang Ditto and Free Stallion. Her poems have, been since, have since been published in New York Quarterly, San Francisco Chronicle, Poets and Writers, Pank Magazine, Teen Vogue, Cosmopolitan Interview, and others. In addition to her powerful solo poetry readings, Amber also presents not your typical poetry reading with her mother, Bonnie Tamplin. And that's, the, that's what we're going to see today. Uh, in their one-of-a-kind presentation, Amber reads her poems and prose from Bang Ditto while Bonnie plays guitar and sings original songs. These two women are best friends who have lived multiple lives on screen and off. Amber is also the executive producer of the Drums Inside Your Chest, an annual poetry concert that showcases outstanding contemporary poets. Amber lives in New York City with her betrothed comedian David Cross. I now have the great pleasure to introduce Amber Tamblin and Bonnie Tamblin. Hi. Can we just give it up real quick for those poets that perform tonight? That, that is not easy. I was, uh, I was a judge of that last year, um, a Poetry Out Loud, and I, uh, I, told, I told all the, the kids that I, when I was a judge, I got up out of my seat and there was a puddle of water from how much I had sweat for them. I think what they do is incredibly brave and amazing, and I'm going to dedicate this set to them. Oh. Are we out there? Right. Can you hear it? <coughs> Don't cover up my set list, man. Don't cover up my set list. Oh, okay. There's enough room for us. <laughs> I'd like to say, as a former member of your clique and a current member of your representation, I know it's hard to be a young woman ages 18 to 24 years old, or a young man in general. They put you in a time slot that doesn't reflect your views, with a rating system that doesn't represent your truths. Listen from one cynical self-hater by default to another. Please put down the magazines that have bored you into hair extensions and reality television. Fake eyelashes will not get you Ryan Gosling, no. Nor will sporting a Barack Obama keychain. No need to break all the rules. Just bend them into balloon animals. Give them to your little brothers and Sisters, show them how silly and cute American culture can be. Time will naturally deflate it all. Start mosh pits in the crowded thoughts of tycoons. Stir something up with your tongue. Sip someone else's logic and then spit it out, preferably when they're looking. Taste test your own style. Get your mind into the gutters of others. Search for the things they let go or threw away down the drain. Everyone's scared to tell you how they really feel. 
including Oprah. Stop getting wasted and throwing up your individuality outside of a club. There is no fast food to help you cope with that. Leave your mark on the world with something that can't be chosen from a tattoo book of Chinese symbols for the lower back. Pierce something other than your skin. When I tell you to think for yourself, do not give a beep what I say. Insanity Samba, do you hear the time? Infusion and rhythm in universal rhyme. It's easy to sing to, easy to repeat. If you can't dance to it, honey, the song is incomplete. Dance, dance with me, darling. Rock me off of my feet. You don't dance with me, darling. The song is incomplete. Dance, dance with me, darling. Rock me off of my feet. You don't dance with me, darling. The song is incomplete. Now if you say, sing a song I ain't heard before. If you say, sing a song I ain't heard before. That's your line. If you say, sing a song I ain't heard before. Oh, right. It's not a song. We're doing poetry. So you should change <laughs> your own you line. If you say, read a poem you ain't heard before. How about I just interrupt your song the whole time? Make a one I can't forget, one I can't ignore. You may be my mother. Hear it on the radio. I'm not in your womb anymore. Hear it on the street. If I'm you my own person dance, now. Do it, honey. The song is incomplete. Dance, dance with me, darling. Rock me off of my feet. You don't dance with me, darling. The song is incomplete. Dance, dance with me, darling. Rock me off of my feet. You don't dance with me, darling. The song is incomplete. Dance. Me off of my feet. You don't dance with me, darling. The song is incomplete. Yeah, dance, dance with me, darling. Me, darling. Me off my feet. Now. You don't dance with me, darling. The song is incomplete. Dance, dance with me, darling. That's the spirit. My face. I'm going to do a couple of poems about my face. Just, just a couple. Just enough to annoy you. My face is a trillion dollar industry annually. It carries more advertisement guilt than post 9-11. My neck is a support beam bigger than Madonna's shoulders. Lady's got some big shoulders. My tongue's gone into hiding, afraid it might be the next thing to get cut out, like chin fat or carbohydrates. My spiritual deficit has tripled in size. Stockbrokers would call it alarming. God would call it the end of a lunch break. Indian nation would call it that bitch payback. Pardon. I have wrinkles at 26 years old because they were pointed out to me in the first place. And for an unlimited time only, I can make them worse. With a lifetime supply of Diet Coke and no self-esteem. My happiness comes for free with a mail-in rebate that's more expensive than a president's dreams. I've got skin soothers blackhead removers and night vision goggles for detecting Charlie in the potholes of my pores. It's a war zone on my T-zone and Neutrogena's got the nuke. My face runs its own nonprofit organization to help my cheeks raise awareness and fight 
laugh lines. Your favorite tabloid is my philanthropist. I subscribe to their eating disorder. Get on my actress's diet. I'm trying to get back to my birth weight. I pass it on to other young girls so they can learn how to smile with their rib cage too. How to go on a hunger strike in protest of celebrity anorexia. Because I am a giver. I share my trillion dollar market with the disheartened. I bond with them over falling apart. It, it keeps us together like estrogen pills and age 60 like a starlet fading star. I'm a giver. I've got a 1.7 trillion dollar face. It's worth more than the fight against AIDS. It's been tucked more times than a model's spine between her legs. Women's rights look to my face for advice on how to be up tight. I your embassy of product placement. Wear me, little girl. I only know half of this poem by heart. So, Judges, take that into consideration. <laughs> I expect no less than a negative one. Mom brought back El Jimidor tequila and cedar from Mexico. I drank some. I peed a lot. I never can compute that math. I burned the wood. I sunk a stone in my kidney. I wrote a letter to the devil. I punched his face with my language. I asked him, hey, what is so unlovable about me? He wrote back and said, love is a liar. I was adopted. I was aborted. After the Renaissance, before the Holocaust, close to ghost, far from holy, seriously slacking in the sex department, yet Satisfied, too. I'm wearing my best Fendi stiletto heels tonight. It's not true, it's a boots. That's what the poem says. Hollywood is a strange mixture of narcissism and fear. I could mix a cocktail with its breath that could kill your mom. I hope she's not already dead. That is going to make the rest of this poem awkward and I apologize. You're drinking Maker's Mark tonight without me somewhere, which is anywhere I would rather be than here. Holly Weird, standing at the valet on Sunset Boulevard, waiting for my car for over 20 minutes, overhearing these two girls standing next to me talking about their dyed pubic cuts and like how much their boyfriends are gonna love them. Okay, cool. <laughs> I start thinking. I start wondering. If when you kissed me, if I tasted like wasted time, I'm gonna get in this car and I'm gonna write an epic piece and call it, it's hard to face your problems when the problem is your face. You can laugh at that, it's okay. <laughs> Insert me spitting here. I know where petals go when they die. Sad poem, taking 
about a guy at a valet on Sunset Boulevard. Sounds like a bad movie that no one here wants to watch. Am I right, ladies? This is a true story that resulted from that same similar instance. I was in Paris at a coffee shop. I was writing, and the waiter came up to me and asked what I was writing. I said, I'm a poet. And he asked if I would write him a poem, and I said, no. I do not commit without commitment, sir. Merci beaucoup. Uh, he went away. He came back with a rolled up paper napkin that he had sort of tied off, and he got down on one knee, and he uh, proposed with a paper napkin, like a ring. He put it on my finger, and I said, uh, that's adorable. But I, we, we don't even speak the same language. I mean, how is that going to work? My mom will not be into that, even though my mom speaks French. A little bit. I unrolled the napkin and I wrote this poem on it for him. And then I had the smarts to take another napkin and write it on that napkin so I would have it so I could share it with you today. Here it is. Dear Jean-Luc, I don't wear diamonds. Heirlooms are exempt. Your grandma's karma is your grandma's problem. My father stole and gave my mother a crystal doorknob from a door at the hotel they could never afford to stay in. True story. She keeps it on the windowsill and lets it catch the light and blind her at random points during the day. He was in love. She drank an entire bottle of tequila, then ate the worm at the bottom and told him, you are rich, sir. Take a smile to the bank. I don't know what that means either. She was drunk hippies. It was my father's forearms that kept her ribs moving, fingers on the keys of melodic breathing. She was in love. They've been married 25 years. They've been married 30, almost 31. You really should stay out of this. Okay. I'll take you to Judge Judy. All right. You always say that, though. <laughs> so tell me, romantique, may I sharpen my teeth on yours? Don't bring your emotions into this. I need a simple yes or no that involves little to poetics or sweat. We shall consummate our agreements between lips covered in fragments of stars that fell into our hangovers while we were drunk on elsewhere. You can write your own alphabet on the juvenilia of my legs pressed against your pupils for the first time. My thighs are Bibles. Spread the word. I was dirty. I will not apologize to you. This is not a poem. Just a sermon etched on the bullet I'm placing within you. I'll burrow into your heart and explode. Stand at the Rubik's of what most puzzles you and bend me brilliant. Let's find a quiet corner somewhere and beat it up. Lean onto my mouth, lower your voice down into mine like a rescue worker. Let my trigger pull you, blow you away. Gypsy, gypsy. In the rain, give me love, will you give me pain? Give me wild dreams, I can't sleep at night. Make me feel so good, make me feel all right. Bottle of beer, bottle of wine, bottle of life, don't it taste so fine?
a bottle of light Don't it taste so fine Here's to you Here's to me And our life We tell for free yeah, yeah. My favorite part It's my favorite part, you guys La petit morceau gypsy. What she said. What she said. Thank you. All right. Coming to a close here, y'all. Mom, you write all these songs, don't you? Uh, you have you have an album out, don't you? I do. You have another album coming out, don't you? Uh-huh. You are the Scottish Nicki Minaj, aren't you? <laughs> you are the Lucinda Williams of She Wishes. <laughs> you are the Hillary Clinton of the 12th string. You are the TJ Maxx of Holland. That one literally made no sense whatsoever. I don't even know if there's a TJ Maxx in Holland. Let's just cut that from the record so that everything else looks great. Hi, camera one. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, you. <laughs> Poetry, guys. Serious. This is a love poem for this guy. Look at the way your dirty socks stare at all my dirty underwear. Our love beats the love Hemingway had for Paris. The kind of love that marriage carries for swans. As long as homosexual swans are included in marriage otherwise, no. You are my bandana soaked in holy water. This is what I call whiskey when I'm tying your sweat to my forehead, when I'm closing in on your multiple noses like a sorority girl kiss. We're not drunk always, just forever. There's a difference. That's our book title, our mantra, etc. Our quenched life's climax. Listen. I bargain with the world's greatest dicks for you. I'm not talking statuesque, I'm talking pricks. Ask any diary. You are the most confident Tijuana. You are sheriff's powder and the secret to why pretzels taste so good. It's not the mustard. I want to be the bullet that crashes the party of all the women who ever tore through you. You are a barcode of drum rolls on my thigh in the subway. You are a scribbler of figure eights on the trunk of my hips. Your initials have replaced my teeth. You are everything that smiles about me. And lastly, parents, please cover your six-year-old's ears. You have the most beautiful, tiny, tight, very small. I reach for it more than I complain. Fronte never put out a second album. Fronte is a 90s reference. See, this audience knows what I'm talking about. More than I complain that Neil Young didn't do Harvest Moon Part 2. What's wrong with that guy? At night, 
I crawl into bed, wasted as a trash heap of pearls on the street. Listening to you sing Nickelodeon songs while showering, you freak. <laughs> That's not in the poem, but I always have to say it because it makes me laugh so hard. Because he really does do that. Move your arms like Henry. That's what he does in the shower. That's hot. My left breast leans over to my right one and high fives it. He'd love Grand. In the form of a raven, my lover comes to me. Wings dark and dusty, beating against the sea. Thank you so much to uh, to Jeff and the wonderful Terry at the um, what was that the Embassy Suites today, who uh, is an acupuncturist and I have a messed up knee and last night when I got in he said oh I got some needles in my car I know this is sounding bad but I checked him out he's the real deal and he fixed my knee so I could stomp on the ground today for you guys that to me is what West Virginia is about when I go on Facebook later. That's what it's all about. In New York City, it would have been a different kind of needles. <laughs> Ooh. None of that, none of that. These poems, these last couple poems are not published yet, but 
from a series for my next book about child star actresses. Which is a, I've been one, I've been there. Uh, I'm particularly fascinated by fame and what happens to people when they move to Los Angeles and they become famous and then they fall out of that fame. Uh, and what happens to their lives, what happens to them as people beyond all of that. Um, to me, as a young woman growing up in that world, that is a struggle that I have known uh, under different lights. And um, these poems are, uh, some are real and some are not. And I wanted to explore and express them, so here they are. Jennifer Davis. Fame is the biological father of pie. What seems so understood will never be. 3.14 we adore, it's beyond that. The silence of ever that kills. The never-ending necklace of decimals. So when she stumbled across my genetic muck and tried to pluck a memory from it, coming up to me at the bar and saying, hey, I'm Allison. Do I know you from somewhere? I can't remember. Are you famous or something? What are you famous from? I wanted to say, yes, I'm famous from the center of nowhere, performing trapeze on a strand of my ancestor's mane. I can be seen tightrope walking the telephone wires of washed up professional wrestlers, eavesdropping with my bare feet. I am known for my balance. I had a cameo in the ninth pew of my father's funeral. I starred in both abandonments, the prequel from my mother and the sequel from my son. I've been in the background of my entire life. So take it from an actress who never wanted to be one, Allison. What I've been in and what you've been in ain't nothing compared to what we'll be in someday, which is a fist fight with heaven's entry fees, a wolf prison when the moon finally throws us its bone, a mediocre exchange of oxygenated vowels with the landlords of our wrinkled tits casting our heartstrings into a body of acceptance speeches with the lowest of tides. Let me ask you, do you still think you'll be able to find me famous when I tell you I'm broke? When I tell you this drink is what keeps me going? When I can't remember either what I was once famous for? Will I still be famous tomorrow when you wake up and say to your roommate, I dreamt I discovered the final digit of pi. It's a drunk bitch at the 32nd Street bar. Two, Alison Andres. I couldn't remember her name. Only that we are both specialists. I do recall some coded interview quote of hers in the 90s, wearing too many auras. But even then, she was impossible to read, drowning in the glossy undercurrents of a magazine. In person, she is a resistance of instances, a rogue bud tastelessly wasting my tongue. But her eyes, here, in front of me, those diving morsels, those hippodromes of grief. I recognize their unsymmetrical trickle as my own, as though her face was a smear on her mother's apron. Those slouched ducts, like animated oil cans, like the parted beaks of birds bracing for lightning in trees. Eyelashes as long and straight as a blade of grass in a dead man's lawn. Hey, there is no such throne, she warned me when I asked if she was famous. I sieved through the archives of her breath. I swayed into the sallow milk of her skin, my beer sloshing head like a Hawaiian hurricane. I wanted to say, hey, 
understand. I'm an actress too. I wanted to tell her about the auditions, the headshots, the rejection after a decade of rejections, notes about the lip I give, all the surgical encouragements, the inability to give up that dream for a casual death. I wanted to attach my tipsy limbs to her umbilical, reach in and untie all the knots, rearrange her organs like militant buttermilk clouds and turn them into safety nets for blood. Instead, I walked away from the crash, an upward turned shield putting double digit wrinkles onto my face. My friends waited to hear what I had uncovered. I said nothing. I ordered another drink, something darker, something I could see my own reflection in. This last poem I'll do is for the late Brittany Murphy. Thank you. In the shower, her body dies like a spider's. The blooming flower seeds a cemetery. A pill lodges in the inner pocket of her flesh coat. Her breasts were the gifts of ghosts, dark tarps of success. Her mouth dribbles over onto the bathroom floor, Pollock blood. The body is removed off the red carpet, put in a black bag, taken to her mother's screams for identification. The country says good things about the body. They print the best photos, the least bone, the most peach. Candles are lit in the glint of every glam. Every magazine stand does a southern bell curtsy in her post box office bomb honor. The autopsy finds an easy answer. They say good things about the body. How bold her eyes were, bigger than Hepburn's. The way she could turn into her camera close up, like life depended on her. <clears throat> Be still and know that day and night. Be still and know that dark and light are one holy circle. Those are sad poems. So, Circles and Cycles. This is a song that I wrote for Amber when we were first on tour knowing that we come and see these wonderful places here, beautiful Charleston. We meet lovely people. We always hope we're going to see you again. And we come and we go like the winter wind. Thank you so much. Saturday morning It's looking like rain The wind is a whistling Round my window pane Inside it's cozy With family and friends We're staying warm So many 
many places and faces I see pleasures are plenty when making new Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. A great pleasure to be Ladies here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Amber and Bonnie Tom Tamblin. Thank you. Thank you.